Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so one of the great things about being in Japan and specifically Tokyo is you can find yourself at a big station, look and see a department store and pop in and see an AD that you didn't even know was there. Now, I was in an area called Omiya, Omiya Station. It was close to Omiya Station and there's, an, a depart, there's a department store there called Sogo. I saw an advertisement for, I wanna say Seiko, and I thought, huh, I've been to a, an AD in a Sogo, I wonder. And so I walked in and on the first floor there was a, an AD, a Rolex AD. So I thought this could be nice. Um, it's so, sort of out of the way. Are there gonna be any undiscovered steel spurs models? There weren't. Um, I've got some footage of what they did have coming up, but um, I had a great conversation with the guy that was working there and we talked about uh, the fact that they're retiring the black 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 GMT he said that yeah it's not in the catalog and uh, they haven't officially sort of announced that they're gonna nix it but you know, it's not in the catalog, so he pretty much was like, yeah, it's, uh, that looks like it's uh, going that way. And I asked him about the new Datejust, the steel Datejust, and, you know, it's, uh, they've got, it, it has a black dial, Jubilee bracelet, and a fluted bezel, and then on the website you can also see one with a smooth bezel, silver dial, and oyster bracelet and I asked him if there are going to be other dial variations you know with that uh, what is it uh, 3235 movement and he said yeah so it's not going to be just in black according to him they're going to have different dial variations and that's kind of nice um, I was just thinking it was going to be only black so I don't I don't know why I thought that was interesting just because uh, maybe because I was under the impression that um, it was only going to be the black dialed one that, that, uh, that has that new movement. Um, what else did he say? Uh, we talked about, um, we talked about, of course, the fact that you can't uh, find a lot of steel models. And I asked him uh, why, and he said, well, they make a certain number of watches and that's it and they don't balance out sort of demand so according to him they they have a set number they make per year the steel ones happen to be popular those are the ones that go and so that's why you see all gold and two-tone pieces when you go there so they don't say well you know our steel line is really popular let's decrease the number of gold pieces and let's increase the number of steel pieces. So according to him, it's just like a set number. Now, you know, if, if I was gonna say if, if the precious metal model started getting really popular, I guess, you know, we could see a shift in that. But, but the fact is the precious metal and the two-tone uh, models are really expensive. And I, I think uh, we love the steel because we love the steel. A lot of other people like the steel because it's cheaper and, um, and so they're more likely to just pick up a, you know, a, a steel GMT uh, because it's just more affordable, right? And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of interesting. We talked about the, the Sky Dweller and the fact that I'd seen a, and you guys have seen footage of this, when I was in Amsterdam, I looked in the window and I saw a white dialed Sky Dweller. And was that a mistake not picking that up? I probably could have flipped it. Look, I mean, I didn't have 14,000 euros on me and yeah, it was just not really feasible to sort of make, make that transaction happen. But I probably could have uh, flipped it here for a couple thousand dollars. So uh, all the more reason to have a, a black Amex card with no limit. So if you do see that, that uh, awesome steel Rolex, you just pick it up and take it to wherever and flip it and make a couple thousand. Um, and uh, I walked out with a bag and a, a catalog, a, an awesome catalog with uh, that's thick. It's like a book, you know, like book binding. Um, that was really cool. So I don't know it was, if it was the conversation that got me that or the suit. 
or thrown out these these uh, movement terms that that I threw out uh, when we were having our conversation. Anyway, it was uh, it was an awesome AD, and the guy was really nice. And I tell you, I mean, if I was on the fence of getting you know between getting a a, a watch and walking out of there, he would have swung me because he was nice and not like in a in a uh, obsequious sort of. Uh, brown nosing type way he was just sort of he was a genuine guy who seemed to like watches and and he knew his movements and and i think he recognized that in me as well and uh that's the kind of guy that 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 can get my money so hey if i ever do get a a new rolex i'll probably go out to omiya and and check out that ad and and buy it from that guy anyway uh enjoy this footage take care see you next time precious metal day dates Never seen dials like these. Uh, the one on the left is kind of interesting, way too blingy for me. The one on the right, hideous. Up here, I think these are the best looking day dates. That's a beautiful dial. Now, I think one of the Logan brothers has one of these, which kind of detracts from it, but still, I, I think that's the day date to have. Love the white gold. There's the Archie Luxury Sub now. His was pre-ceramic, that's a ceramic version. I'm not much for gold pieces, but that is a pretty cool watch. And you've got the precious metal Daytonas. Over here on the right, you got the ubiquitous Yacht Master 2s, which are like the dogs of the range, the very expensive dogs. I'd be kind of embarrassed to have one of those. They're so unpopular. Yeah, I'd take one, though. All right, the Oyster Perpetual line. Up here, you got some date justs. Good looking, just everyday, all around watches. They don't have the blue dialed. Oyster Perpetual that I was thinking about getting. But I tell you, that that white is great. I mean, that's almost as good as the, the Blue Dial, if not better. This is the catalog. 2018-2019. Got a price list here. Japanese yen. Let's see what we got there. Ah. Yeah, this is the page we want. Oyster Perpetual Professional. So prices in yen right there with tax included. And yeah, this is the the book. So yeah, this will help me practice my Japanese for sure. Ah, James Cameron, how you doing? All right. Anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.